Is adblock the same thing as piracy? This is a topic that I've been needing to discuss here for the last couple of weeks because a couple of weeks ago I made a video about an audio player that takes audio from free streaming platforms on the internet and basically plays that audio in your desktop client on your computer. But by doing this in this desktop audio client, what it does is it no longer serves you ads. You're not bombarded with all those ads you would be bombarded with had you actually viewed that content on the website itself using a web browser, right? And people were asking, well, that's is that legal? Because you're supposed to view those ads to view that content. Surely this is illegal. And a lot of people wanted to equate this sort of ad block to being piracy. And this is a debate that constantly comes up. I've been seeing this same tired argument for at least a decade now. People that like to claim that ad block is piracy. And I just think that's that's ridiculous because we should go into a deeper discussion about the pros and cons of ad block and you know is ad block is it a moral thing to do to block ads or not but let's talk about the legal aspect because piracy is actually illegal when we're talking about uh, online piracy it's illegal in most countries in the world ad block is not illegal because ad block is not the same thing as piracy. We've actually had court cases about this, but you know, when we talk about piracy on the internet, if you go and view the definition of piracy in any popular dictionary, they'll say that online piracy is essentially the unauthorized use of somebody else's work or the illegal copying of somebody else's work. And the copying part is what most people think when they think of piracy, is the illegal copying of somebody else's work, right? You go to some file sharing website and you download some music or movies or books or whatever that you didn't actually purchase, right? You have no rights to actually consume that content. But somebody was willing to share their copy that either they purchased legally or they got illegally, and then they want to pass it along to you illegally. Essentially, it's a free copy, right? And that is illegal, and that certainly fits the definition of piracy. But here's the thing with adblock. Adblock, there's no copying aspect to adblock, right? When you enable an ad blocker in your web browser and it blocks an ad, you didn't get anything, right? You, you didn't copy anybody's work or anything. So if you're talking about the illegal copying aspect of piracy, clearly ad block is not piracy. But what about the first part of the definition of piracy, which was the unauthorized use of somebody's work? Well, still, that ad block does not fit that definition either because the unauthorized use of somebody else's work, you would have had to enter into some kind of legally binding agreement with that person. Most websites, anything on the internet, most of them do have terms of service if they're a big company. Smaller sites often don't even have a terms of service, but most of the sites that do have terms of service, nowhere in those terms of service, usually, is a requirement that you actually have to watch ads to be on the site and consume that content. There's very, very few sites that actually add that to a terms of service. And there are sites that do add that to a terms of service. Again, they're very few, but in that case, would it be illegal for you to circumvent? Well, uh, that, that may be the case, uh, but at least when it's been tried in court, and we've had several court cases, uh, especially in Europe and Germany, ad blocking cases come up all the time. We just had a couple of weeks ago, actually, if you check out the news, there was a, a case in the German Supreme Court about a, an ad blocker, a popular ad blocker plugin being sued by a company and, and they won the case. And there's been several of these cases in Germany. And every time the German courts have always sided with the ad blocker and the German courts have actually stated that ad blocking is not illegal and that you have a right to block ads. So you're not really breaking any laws by enabling an ad blocker. So we've already settled this in court. It's not illegal because it's not illegal. Don't equate it to clearly illegal practices like piracy, because again, you didn't enter any kind of legally binding contract. When I go to a, my, a website, I open my web browser and I enter a web address, a URL, right? I don't enter into a contract before typing in www.whateverthenameis.com, right? Until I get there, hell, I don't even know if that site's going to have ads or not, right? So how could how could I be responsible for having an ad block enabled when I first go to a site, right? Obviously, I can't. And that's one of those things that nobody likes ads. 
generally speaking, no one likes ads. No one that consumes content. The people that cry foul about ad block are usually content producers, but not all. Obviously, I produce content. I depend on ad revenue. I don't cry about ad block because I understand what ad block is. But the people that are crying are almost always content creators, right? But generally, normal people, right? just the general consumer, they all hate ads. Nobody wants to be served an ad. And the reason is I, I go to a website and I get bombarded with all these ads. They just blast ads all over the place to me. Every time I go to a new page, yada, 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 and I have absolutely no control. I also don't, don't get any kind of warning, right? When I type a web address in the URL bar in my browser before I get to the site, there's no warning. Hey, you might not want to go to this site because it's going to have a lot of ads. No, I get there and then boom, you know, a million ads. So no warning, no control. And that's really the problem with the whole ad revenue model is no one has control of it. Me, the consumer, right? I can't control which ads I get served, how often I get served an ad. Many times you, you get served ads for products, services that are not appropriate to you, you're not interested in, or depending on what part of the world you're in and then what that ad is for, it may be something that you can't even purchase. So that ad is really just a waste of your time. And when I say that the consumer has no control over the ads, you know, as someone that has ads, obviously on my videos, but I've made websites before and used ad networks like Google AdSense, you know, as a webmaster, as a website owner, I have no control over the ads either. All I can do is insert some code on my web pages that will serve ads. I have no control over what ads get shown or, or anything like that. You know, all of that is controlled by these third party ad networks. So even the site owners have no control over what ads get served or any, any other kind of controls, right? So obviously the consumer has no control in this either. But the thing with the consumer is the consumer isn't getting paid, right? The site owner obviously is getting paid. But any, even that, site owners, they don't make anything. AdSense pays literally nothing. I mean, we're talking about pennies on the dollar. Well, really, we're talking about for thousands of impressions, sometimes you get paid pennies. You know, so obviously because the ads pay so little, I've got to serve more ads, right? And that's why these sites, these big websites, serve so many ads is because the ads pay so little to make enough money, they feel like I can't serve one ad to you. I've got to serve 10 ads to you. I, I've got to serve a million ads today just to make enough money to fill up my car with gas or, you know, whatever basic needs I have. And this leads to another problem why pretty much everyone hates ads is because all these ads, because every, these site owners have to serve so many ads just to make a few pennies, so much bandwidth is sucked up by ads being served to you. So you go to a website and it's serving all these ads, you know, that's sucking up your internet bandwidth, especially mobile users. Mobile users, you know, typically pay for their data. And so much of their data is wasted by being served ads that again, they don't even want to view in the first place. There have actually been some studies in years past where there were estimates of 20% to 40% of your data bandwidth on mobile for some users was taken up by being served ads. And those these are people that spend all of their time on their phone on ad heavy sites. So this would be the people that hang out on Facebook all day. You don't realize it, but that is actually costing you money. Not only are you not the one making money when you get served these ads, those ads are actually costing you money. And of course, this applies to all media streaming platforms, any kind of ads that you get served. Again, those ads, they take up bandwidth. They just slow down everything. They, they make the whole experience of consuming that content so much worse to the point where you're basically driving your consumer away when you're serving all those ads. And I think all of the content creators and media platforms, the music industry, the uh, film industry, the gaming industry, all these industries that rely heavily on ad revenue, and many of them are the ones that cry foul with ad block, right? Ad block is piracy. Well, we've already dismissed that, right? We've debunked that myth. It clearly isn't piracy. Is it wrong? Is it immoral to block ads? Should you be consuming those ads so your sites and creators and whatnot make a few 
pennies on the dollar. Well, that's up to you. But again, I understand the negatives of it. And, and you have to make that choice for yourself. I will say most people have already made that choice. They refuse to be bombarded with ads that they, they don't want, right? Because honestly, the whole ad revenue thing, it's a failed business model. And that's the problem. That's the problem with these content creators and media platforms that cry foul about ad block is they have not come to the realization that the rest of us have known uh, at least for 15, 20 years now, and that the ad revenue model is a dying model. It's a failed model. If you're dependent on Google AdSense, for example, or Facebook ads, for example, for all of your income, guess what? You are destined for heartache and failure. And the reason for this is that your whole business model is built around pissing people off before they even consume your content. And we've seen this play out. The music industry is a dying industry, right? The film industry, it, it's in shambles. All your online publications, almost all of them are now long dead. The ones that are still available online, most of them are on life support. I think people that depend almost entirely on ad revenue for their source of income really should rethink their whole business model. Come up with a different business plan. Instead, why don't you make quality content that people are willing to pay for, willing to sign up for, have a membership for, a subscription for, or in my case, what I often do, you know, I, I ask for donations, right? In free and open source community, we often ask for donations for our work. And that's a, a good model. You would actually be surprised how many people are willing to open their wallets and freely donate to a project or to content that they consume, anything that they find useful because if they find it useful, they want to keep getting that content because it helps them in life, right? And if they know them donating a few bucks a month will help produce that content, they will gladly do that. And if you're one of these networks or online publications or whatever serving ads, maybe you want to start selling subscriptions or memberships. What you should do is make sure that if you do that, you offer a perk to the people that are actually purchasing that subscription. Make sure that they don't get served any more ads if they're willing to pay you a few bucks a month. Because remember, the ads, they're low paying ads anyway. If somebody's willing to pay you five bucks a month for no ads on a streaming service or online publication, trust me, that five dollars a month that person gave you is far more than the few pennies you would have got off of them by serving them a bajillion ads, right? So just make that a perk. Hey, if you're gonna sign up to a membership on this site, guess what? I'm gonna make sure my site no longer serves you ads. Again, I think that's a happier consumer because again, you're not pissing them off with all those ads. I just think every website, every streaming platform should do this for paying customers. Now, I've been complaining for years now about the state of the web. I, the World Wide Web, in my opinion, is a dumpster fire, right? It's garbage, right? 95% of the web is straight trash, low quality garbage websites. Why is that? Well, in large part, the reason the web is so filled with all of this garbage is because of the ad networks, because that's what the spammers do. They crap out a hundred low quality websites or a thousand or 10,000, you know, with thousands of page on each of those 10,000 websites. And, and none of these pages are good content. Most of it is auto-generated content or gibberish. It's just there so they can put ads on these low quality websites. So hopefully their websites come up in the Google search algorithms and maybe somebody will accidentally click on a link to that website at some point and get served that ad and they make a couple of cents, right? And this has produced so much spam on the internet. The reason there is so much spam on the internet is really because of Google AdSense. They are the primary fuel for that fire. Now, as far as ad block goes, should you use it? Should you not use it? As far as a moral thing, I will say this. I don't think it should be a situation where it's, hey, you either view all ads on all sites or you block all ads on all sites. I think the ad blocking programs themselves, I, I think, they need better control. Some of them do. Some of them allow you to basically add a site to a whitelist or, or a blacklist, de depending on, you know, should you block all ads by default or allow all ads by default? And I think that's a, a better way to do it. What I would suggest is allow all ads by default 
And then when you find the scummy sites or the sites that go way over the top with ads, you know, they don't deserve your money anyway. They don't deserve your time. They don't deserve the bandwidth that's of yours that's being consumed by those ads. Yeah, yeah. add them to a blacklist and then block their ads, right? But the ones that are serving ads in a more responsible manner and that you find their content appealing and actually useful, yeah, view those ads. Um, for me, what I've done most of my life is I don't use Adblock. The only time I use Adblock is on the browsers that I use on my machines when I'm recording videos. I have to block ads because for one thing, it's just a bad look with ads coming up while I'm trying to record my desktop. The other thing is some of those ads are multimedia ads and there could be copyrighted content. For example, if it plays music or something, you know, that could get that video in trouble. So I have to block ads on you know my machines that I record on that I make these videos on but really before doing the YouTube channel I refused to have ad block because I'm I was one of these people that used to build websites and depended on ad revenue for things I did writing articles and even now you know, of course doing the video content you know I, I know what it's like depending on that money so if I go to a website you know, I'll view the ads. I'm not going to view them, but, you know, ads get served. You know, I'm one of those people. I've got mental ad block <laughs> when I see an ad. You know, it's like it's not there anyway. I never actually read them, but I understand th their purpose, and I understand the struggle that it is to be a content creator. So I've hit on a lot of points talking about ad block here, and I think the bottom line is that ad block is clearly not the same thing as piracy, at least not as piracy is traditionally defined. And anyone telling you that Adblock is piracy, they have their own agenda, their own motives, fair enough, but regardless of their agenda, it is irresponsible for anyone to equate a perfectly legal action with a clearly illegal action. And the people doing that need to be called out on their bullshit. Peace, guys.